It is January in Southern California, and January typically means bigger waves. It also means the water is colder, but that doesn't stop a handful of sharks from leaving. And just behind the surf, I find these two. Why have these sharks not traveled south for the winter? Have they always done this, or is this new behavior? I'm not really sure, but part of my filming of these creatures means I will catalog these sightings and compare the sharks to future sightings. I notice the sharks have been hanging very near the surface, soaking up the winter sun. Perhaps it's because it's warmer there? I love filming these animals in the wild, but it's not always me doing the filming. You see, my wife helps me get many of these shots. We often fly in tandem to help each other plan those unique shots. And here's an example of how we do it. Typically, we have what we call an A shot and a B shot. Depending on the shot, we will plan it accordingly based on what we are seeing and our particular flight strengths. Here's her view. There are two sharks approaching each other, but she has no idea there's a second shark. In this case, I'm the B camera, and you see her drone as the A camera. I communicate to her to let her know where the shark approaches and to maintain that flight angle. This is the result, a very well-documented record of a shark-to-shark -shark encounter. So I move in close and we exchange positions. I become the A camera and she films me grabbing the close-up footage seen here. We rely on this method to capture unique encounters and maximize the most effective angle to record the action. This allows us to record moments like this. As I search for sharks, I've become accustomed to clues that tell me where they are. Some of these clues you can only see from above. Do you see the trail here? This month has been a harder month to find sharks, mainly because the waves have been larger and the water has been very stirred. As you can see, it's a bit harder to see the sharks. There are definitely fewer sharks in January, but there's something else returning this month that has me very excited for the months ahead. Something I don't think a drone has captured with a white shark. The first gray whales have arrived, and boy are they majestic. I may be wrong, but I think it's only a matter of time before I see a white shark and a gray whale together. Why do I say this? Because I've seen them before. The only difference is that now I'm prepared to capture it. And because I'm reminded that nature always holds surprises. The gray whales, who have one of the longest migrations in all of the animal kingdom, pass very close to shore. They do this to protect their young calves. And if my intuition is correct, they will be passing right through an area I know is home to many white sharks. So hopefully, in the coming months, I can share with you the images of the whales and the sharks, and maybe even dolphins together. Who knows, I may be wrong, but the journey to capture it is what keeps me motivated. And this month, that motivation helped me find Arrow once again. The injured shark, after five months of searching, he's returned. Stay tuned for my next video. I will be sharing more on its injuries and close-up footage of this shark, who I thought I would never see again. If you enjoy the shark footage, 
please like and subscribe. And if you'd like to learn about sharks, I've included some informative links in the description, as well as where you can get involved in protecting them.